Okay, problem number three uh, will be a problem in, in, in the section about statically indeterminate problems. Uh, it might be axial like this one. Now, I'm not going to do this one, uh, but I just want to throw it out here to you to remind you that it could be axial like this one, or it could be torsional. I'm, I'm going to do this uh, torsional problem. Uh, try this problem on your own. I think this one may have been in a recitation or in a homework problem or something. I think we've done this problem. Uh, but one thing that I will tell you, um, for the uh, final exam, I'm going to give you this, these like this E is 10 times 10 to the 3 PSI for that material. This material, its E is 14.6 times 10 to the 3 PSI. I, I will just give those to you in the problem statement like like I do right here. Uh, so don't worry about having to look those up in the back of the book or anything. Um, but, but anyway, try this problem. I'll, I don't have the final answer here. I'll give you the final answer if you want it, if we haven't already done it. So it could be axial. It could be torsional. Now, I'm going to work out torsional, but it definitely still could be axial. And also, uh, what, this one doesn't do it, but look at those problems where you have the change in temperature, right? Where you have the change, change in temperature, and you have to worry about, hey, there not only is the delta L um, FL over EA, but also alpha delta TL, right? Also alpha delta TL. So for this problem and these problems, your, your, your compatibility might be what is the delta L doing? So for this one, I would say that the delta L of the aluminum is equal to the delta L of the brass, right? We don't have temperature. The delta L of aluminum is equal to the delta L of the brass, and the delta L is FL over EA. All right, that's that's somewhere on your formula sheet, but you can memor you know that you can memorize that. The, the, your compatibility. The, write a sentence. Write an equation so, saying so, stating something about your delta Ls of one material and your delta L of the other material, or the delta L of one section, the delta L of another section. Maybe they add up to zero. They add up to a gap or they're equal to each other, or they're a ratio of each other. Delta L is FL over EA, uh, and alpha delta TL if you have a temperature change. Okay, but let's to, we're going to focus on the torsional um, type of this problem. Uh, so what if we have this one? We've got a steel shaft. Uh, it's made up of two segments. Um, AC has a smaller diameter, 0.5. CB has a larger diameter of 1. It's fixed its ends, and it has a torque of 500 pound-feet to determine the maximum shear stress in the shaft. Okay, all right. So, uh, from statics, uh, if this is going over that way, then I've got a torque at B, and I've got a torque at A. TA plus TB are going to counteract, are going to add up to that 50, right? That, that's really from summing the moments. TA plus TB are going to add up to 50 pound-feet. Okay, that's pound-feet. So let me be careful with my units there. Um, but that's not enough. That's I don't know if it's... 100 and 400. I don't know if it's 250 and 250. That's not enough. I need another equation. What's my other com equation? Compatibility, right? Compatibility, if I spelled that right. So for uh, axial problems, my compatibility is something about the delta L's, right? The stretch, the elongation, the change in length. For this one, my, my compatibility is something about the angle of twist, Right, the angle of twist of section AC. So if this is twisting, AC might twist some. Section CD might twist some. Section DB might twist some. But they're going to add up to zero because it has to go back to where it was originally. So the angle of twist might add up to zero. Uh, the angle of twist of the inner might be equal to the angle of twist of the outer. You know, we look at all the different compatibility. It's not always going to add up to zero, right? But this one, um, this one it does. What is angle of twist? Angle of twist is TL over GJ. TL over GJ. TL over GJ. But this T is the internal torque 
for each of those sections, the internal torque for each of those sections. So what is the internal torque inside section AC? Well, I would draw it like this. I've got TA and I cut it right here. So what do I need at this cut right here? I need a TA that way. Is that positive or negative? using my right hand, curling my fingers, it, my thumb is pointed out of the cut, so I need a positive TA right here. So TA times the length of 5 inches, the G of 10.8 times 10 to the 3. Now, looking ahead, because this is 0, and I can't do this unless this is 0, because this is 0, this G, this G, and this G are the same. I could factor it out and multiply it on the other side. I don't even have to have this G right here. If I was looking, thinking clearly, um, and don't take too many shortcuts that you can't, but especially when you have a zero over here, as long as these are the same value, you can factor them out and multiply them across the other side, and it'd be zero. Now, can I do that with a J? No, because the J of these two are different from the J of that section. Um, all right, so anyway, there's a shortcut. Sometimes you can, the more comfortable you are with these problems, um, you know, the, the, the easier you can make them. I'm not going to do that. Anyway, all right, the J right here. The J is pi by 2 radius to the fourth. Pi by 2 radius to the fourth. Now, this is inches KSI, inches, inches. Let me pause right here and talk a little bit about this 500. This is in pound feet. Everything else is in inches. So I might should change this feet to inches. That's probably what I would prefer to do. Change that feet to inches. But similarly... Because I've got the zero over here, and as long as these three are the same units, yeah, I can multiply this times 12, I can multiply this times 12, I can multiply this times 12, or I can not, and because that's a zero right there. So anyway, that's why I'm going to keep all my torques are still going to be in uh, pound feet, even though the units don't exactly work out, because I've got a zero over here, as long as these three are all the same units, uh, then I can uh, not worry about that. So, so anyway, okay, that's the TL over GJ inside section AC. Let's look inside section CD. If I was to cut this inside section CD, I, it would look very similar to what I just drew over here. I'd have the TA right here, uh, and then I would need, at this cut right here, a positive TA, so this is going to be positive. TA, its length is 8 inches, 10.8 times 10 to the 3, pi by 2 radius to the 4th. This one's radius is 0.5. Okay, all right, now let's look at the TL of GJ inside section uh, DB. I could cut it right here. Uh, well, I could keep that half of it. Or I could keep this half of it. We'll see how it, it will work out the same. I'm going to keep this, this half of it. Um, I, I have a TB right here. So that means I need a TB right here. And so do you see that this, using my right hand rule, my thumb is pointing into that cut. So this is a negative TB right here. A negative TB times L over G into the 3, j pi by 2.5 to the 4th equals 0, equals 0. Okay, so I'm going to take this equation and this equation, and I've got two unknowns I can solve for those two unknowns. So uh, maybe I'll write that TB is 500 minus TA plug this in down here. So if TB is minus 500 TA, then this right here becomes minus 500 plus 
TA right here. And that's actually what we would have gotten if we had kept this side of it. We would have gotten a positive TA and a negative 500. So anyway, and so with that, I've got one equation, one unknown. I can solve for TA. 60, it works out to some pretty even numbers, and that means TB, so plug in, plug in 60 way back up there, uh, means TB would be 440 pound feet. Let me not box that in. It didn't ask for the internal torques. It asks for the stress. Okay, maximum shear stress in the shaft. So now that I know the torques, I can find the stress. Stress is TR over J. Well, which T do I use? Maybe you think you use a larger one. Well, but, you know, inside this section, um, I've got a smaller area. I mean, and I'm, I'm sorry, I've got a smaller J. So maybe I need to, um, maybe the smaller stress occurs right there. So I'm going to find the stress in each section. I'm going to find the maximum shear stress in each section. Let me look at AC, let me look at CD, and let me look at DB. AC. So inside section AC, the T is 60 pound feet. And so here I do definitely have to be more careful with my units right here because there's not a zero on the right hand side of my equation or anything that I can get a mistake in units but just multiply to the right hand side equal to zero. Uh, all right so the torque is 60. The R is 0.25 inches. The J pi by 2.25 inches. Sorry. Pi by 2 R to the fourth. So here, yeah, I need to get rid of that foot inches. Um, yeah, so now I'm left with PSI. Uh, this would be 29,300 PSI or 29.3 KSI. That is the shear stress, the maximum shear stress on the outer edge in section AC. Uh, in section CD, TR over J, the T is still 60 pound feet, but the R is 0.5 pi by 2.5 to the fourth. Multiply it times 12, because that's my unit conversion. This would be 3.66 KSI. That's the maximum shear stress on the outer edge. I shouldn't be boxing these in, because I think it's only asking for one maximum shear stress anywhere. All right. But anyway, that's the maximum shear stress inside section CD. How about section DB? TR over J, 440. So maybe this one is largest because of that larger ta uh, torque, uh, but it has a larger radius, and so this J down here, pi by 2, 0.5, and I'm doing 0.5 to the 4. It's really different from 0.25 to the 4th. Um, I had a conversion factor of 12. This would be 26.9. Okay, so, hey, where's the maximum shear stress anywhere? Tau max 29.3 KSI, and it occurs inside section, section AC. But I needed to test out all the sections uh, just to see where the maximum stress would occur. So... Let's recap this problem. This problem, even though it asked for the maximum shear stress, I knew I needed to find the torque. In order to find the torque, I started with just statics. Oh, well, TA and TB are going to counteract, going to add up to 500, but that wasn't enough. I needed something else. I needed compatibility. And for these torsional problems, the compatibility is the um, angle of twist. What is the angle of twist doing? How is this twisting? This one is twisting such that all of the sections have to go back to their original. Eventually, it has to get back to the original one. So some might be having a positive angle of twist, but some might be having a negative angle of twist. And so it adds up to zero. 
ain't twist is TL over GJ. This T is the internal torque inside each section. So just think yourself, okay, if I cut it, what is the internal torque inside this section? If I cut it here, what is the internal torque inside this section? If I cut it here, what is the internal torque inside this, this section? This one was a negative TB. This one was a negative TB or a TA minus 500. And so from compatibility and statics, I had enough to solve for the internal torques. But be careful. I'm asking for the internal torques or the internal stresses. I'm asking for the stresses. So it, And if it wants a maximum stress anywhere, first of all, I know the maximum stress occurs at the outside R. So I just found the stress at the outside R for all three of these sections, compared them, and, and so, okay, the maximum stress uh, anywhere is 29.3, and it occurs on the outside edge inside section AC. So there, we've, we've answered that problem.